So uh, the other day was preaching on the topic called uh, the renewal of our youth like an eagle. Okay, the renewal of uh, our youth like an eagle. And I think it was uh, uh, on the reopening Sunday that we reopened the church maybe two, three weeks ago. And uh, uh, the first Sunday service in the upper room, right? Okay, this is the upper room. I'm going to, I'm going to think about that this is the upper room. This is the upper room. No, no. So what's the reason that uh, they have written that? Not just normally upper room, but there is a there is a meaning that, I mean, you know, when you read uh, Acts of uh, 1 and 2, we understand that uh, uh, in the upper room, the Holy Spirit has come and the Spirit of the Lord was moving in the midst of the people on that day, right? Hallelujah. So we are in an upper, upper room and we are worshiping God in spirit and truth. Okay? So this morning, uh, I'm so glad that we are uh, sitting in this room and worshiping uh, God's presence. And uh, so we have to experience that presence in the midst of us this morning also. So even, you know, many of the families were not uh, able to attend for those that day, for the Sunday, on that Sunday. Uh, but I would like to uh, continue the same portion, uh, not the same portion, but the, the next portion of the same message today also. So we are going to talk about, uh, I mean, uh, how can we renew uh, our strength? How can we renew our spiritual strength like an eagle? Okay. So let us once again read that text verse, uh, which is uh, Psalm number 103, verse 5. Psalm number 103, verse 5. Who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Okay. So on that day, I told you many things about how an eagle renew its strength, and what are the process of renewal, what are the process of renewal. And so to renew our strength, first of all, we must have a realization. We must have a realization about our weak points and our mistakes and our uh, shortcomings and all. So then only we will be able to renew our spiritual strength. And again, we were thinking about, we should have a decision. So we should take a decision to renew our strength. And also, we have to pay the price. We have to pay the price to renew our strength. And also, the last point, the fourth point was, we have to lay aside many things. We have to lay aside many things. Amen. So, but today I'm going to uh, talk about what are the special characteristics of an eagle. What are the special characteristics of an eagle? And let us see how, how we can connect uh, those characteristics of, uh, of, an, of an eagle uh, with our Christian life. So we know that eagles are uh, uh, outstanding among all other birds because of the special characteristics and the special qualities of that bird. You know, there are many birds uh, in, the, in the air, but at the same time, every time eagles are a separate bird. And that eagle is having many I mean, special characteristics and many special qualities. You know, that, 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 that's the reason maybe uh, here uh, in, in Psalm number 103 verse 5, I mean, uh, David the psalmist is sharing about, I mean, I just want to become like an eagle and I would like to renew my spiritual strength like an eagle. I mean, that may be the reason. I mean, so we have to understand that even though you know, even in, in Isaiah chapter 40 or so, in Isaiah chapter 40, uh, verse 30 and 31, we understand that there also the, the, the prophet Isaiah is saying something that when, when I mean, uh, you, 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 your spirit is, I mean, grown up and when your spirit is, I mean, uh, getting the strength, I mean, even the, the youth will be, I mean, getting weary and they'll be tired, but the people, those who are waiting upon the Lord will strengthen their spirit. Amen. So, we have to renew our strength because we are, we are waiting for the Lord. We are sitting in the presence of God and we are waiting for the Lord. So when we wait for the Lord, I mean, the spirit of the Lord says that, I mean, you have to renew your strength. You have to renew your spiritual I mean, strength. So that, now let us I mean, look into the, I mean, the, the first point and the characteristics of, a, of an eagle. The first point is eagle, the bird of vision. Eagle, the bird of vision. Okay, what do you what do you what do you mean by eagle, the bird of vision? So we have to connect our spiritual life with the characteristics or qualities of that bird. Okay, what is that? You know, an eagle can see the things clear. 
20 miles away. An eagle can see, though in the dark and even underwater, the vision is four to five times better than the human eye. Okay? So the eagle can see the things and the prey maybe four to five kilometers away. So they can see the vision. They have the vision. And you know, if, if, if it focuses on something below, and it can easily grab it with seconds. Within seconds, it, it can it can grab the prey. It, so that's what we read. I mean, I read about the, the, the eagle. You know, no matter what the obstacles, the eagle will not be moving. I mean, focusing from the prey until it is grabbed at the prey. I mean, so we have to know that. And the same way, you know, we should have a vision when we are living in this world. So without vision, when we live, there is a problem. You know, when, when we, we have to pray for the vision from the, from the Lord about our spiritual life. So we have to pray for the vision from the Lord about our spiritual life. So we have to pray for the vision from the Lord about our spiritual life. So we have to pray for the vision from the Lord about our spiritual life. So we have to pray for the vision from the Lord about our Without a vision, the people perish. Without a vision, the people perish. Okay, and you know, uh, most of the time, some of the people, they don't have a vision about their spiritual life. And they are not praying to the Lord to have a vision. You know, most of the, most of the believers, they are not knowing, it. they are not having any idea about the spiritual vision and what is the plan and purpose of God about that life. You know, we are not thinking about that. I mean, what happens? You know, God has a special plan and purpose about each person. But most of the time, we are not aware about that. But we have to pray to the presence of God that, oh Lord, I need to know what is the what is the plan and purpose about my personal life and how can I renew my strength in my life? And I need a, a, a vision from the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, most of the time, our people are spiritually blind. So they cannot see the spiritual things. Most of the time, we are, we are blind spiritually. So that is the reason that we are not able to see the visions of God. That, that, that's the reason that we are not able to understand what is the purpose of God and what is the I mean, real uh, plan of God about my life. Okay? So, you know, uh, let, me, let, me, let me tell you one thing about my personal, uh, what is that experience? You know, when, when I was uh, uh, going for the studies, the theological studies, before going there, I got a, got a confirmation that I am called for the ministry of the Lord. But before going for the theological studies, I was not knowing what is my particular ministry to do. I was not knowing anything about what is particular ministry that I, I have to do. But I know that I'm called for the ministry and I have a calling for the ministry. But I went to the theological seminary and when I was studying there, I was just thinking, for so what God I mean, God called me, and what is the ministry that God is assigned for me? Then I was just thinking, well, what, what is the ministry that I should do after my studies? You know, while I was praying, I got a verse from the you know, not only praying, I took fasting and praying, and uh, you know, even though the studies are going on, I was I was asking God a lot. I don't know what is my ministry. And after the studies, there are there are different types of ministries in in Christendom. So we can do any ministry. But at the same time, I was asking, Lord, I need to know what is the particular ministry that which I want to do. Is it a team ministry or a, is it a pastoral ministry or teaching ministry? Whatever, maybe Allah show me what is the particular ministry. Then what happened? You know, when I was praying and taking fasting in the presence of God, the Lord spoke to me uh, the words that is uh, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 27. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 27. Can you read that verse? I have made you a tester of metals and my people the ore that you may observe and test their ways. Yeah. No, that, that verse is, I mean, uh, to, 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 to the prophet Jeremiah. Okay. What is that verse? I have appointed you to examine my people so that you may analyze and know their ways. That means we need to get the vision about what you're going to do. Okay. As I am a pastor, I was getting that clear vision and I was getting that clear word of God that it says that, I mean, you are appointed you to, I mean, I have appointed you to examine my people so that you may analyze and know their ways. 
Okay, even after that, when I was uh, sitting in prayer and the, and the spirit of the Lord has talked to me through one of the prophets and he was saying that, okay, my dear brother, I mean, God has called you for, for, for specifically two ministries. Then I asked the why is that? And he said, I mean, especially the spirit of the Lord said that God has called you for the pastor ministry and also for the teaching ministry. You know, you know, my experience is that after my studies, you know, the, the principal of that college, he was calling me after right after the college, I mean, the studies, he was calling me and saying, oh, uh, Sankuti, I'm, I'm starting a Bible college in, in Nilambur, and can you come there and uh, can you teach uh, uh, the students there? Then I said, okay, let me pray for that and let me, uh, let me, let me take a decision after prayer. No, I was thinking, you know, if God has called me for the teaching ministry, God will open the opportunities for that. I believe that because that is the that is the reality of the vision and that is the reality of the voice of God. When we listen to the word of God, when we receive the vision from the Lord, you know, God will speak to you very clearly. Very clearly. And I went to that college and I was teaching there in, in that college. You know, after that, I did my further studies. At the same time, I was confirmed that God has called me for specifically two ministries, the pastoral ministry and the teaching ministry. So I'm considering the same two ministries still. You know, I know that God has called me for a ministry, but I got the vision and confirmation that to do that. You know, every person, every person sitting here, you have a calling and you have a vision about your spiritual life. I mean, you can do something for the name of the Lord. You can do something for the name of the Lord. Most of the time, we do not know, I mean, what is my calling? And I mean, for what God has called me? You know, everyone is subjected to, I mean, I mean uh, subjected to the vision of God. You have to receive the vision of God. You have to listen to the voice of God from the Lord. And that will encourage you to move forward in the, in the coming days. Hallelujah. You know, I was just thinking about all those things, you know. The eagle also has a clear vision. Eagle also has a clear vision. Secondly, secondly, eagles eat only fresh food. Eagles eat only fresh food. You know, an eagle never is the dead meat. The eagle never is the dead meat. Every time it searches for the fresh food. You know, when the eagle gets the prey, he kills it and then eats it. This is the system that the, the eagle is following. You know, whenever that the eagle is getting a prey, then that eagle is trying to kill that and eat it. Okay? It will not, I mean, eat any dead meat. That's the reason that we can we can we can also connect our spiritual life with the uh, uh, with the eagle. What is that? You know, all of, all of a sudden that, you know, you know we, we, some of the people are thinking, okay, on Sunday, I will get some word of God from the pastor on the in, in church. Then after that, they will be coming in the next next Sunday. Okay, so they are thinking, okay, well, that is, you know, Sunday I'm getting a message and next Sunday also I will get a message. Okay, what is Sunday message? Okay, so it is getting old and old and old. Okay, so it should be a refreshment and we have to get the fresh anointment and fresh word of God from the Lord. So how many of you are, are desiring for that? Oh Lord, every day I need to listen from the Lord. The fresh word of God, the fresh word of God. It is not again, I mean, on one Sunday I'm listening to the word of God, I'm enjoying that and the next Sunday only I'm coming back. No, no, every day we have to take a decision. Every day I will read the Bible. I will read the Bible. You know, you, you have to think about that, that, that particular, I mean, a reason about uh, uh, this, uh, I mean, Hegel, you know, you read uh, Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. Your words were found and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. And it says that I found the word and ate I, it. I found the word and I ate it. And in order to find, we have to search for it. In order to find, we have to search for it. And we have to spend time meditating the word of God. Then the Lord's spirit will speak. 
here jeremia says that i found the word i found the word means he has to spend the time for finding the word of god then only we can have it then only we can eat it but the, the, the problem is the people are not trying to spend time in the presence of god the people are not reading the bible the people are not meditating the bible so that they are not able to find out anything from the bible every day spend time with the word of god and get the fresh food get the fresh word of god i mean yeah, it's not that i mean one sunday getting something and next sunday something no 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 it's, it's it should be i mean every day you know that the word of god says that okay that the mercies of god the word of god is every day every morning it is fresh Hallelujah. So that's the reason that we are connecting the eagle's life with the, the, the listening of the word of God a person. Okay, so when we listen to the word of God, I mean, God's mercies are new in every morning. God's mercies are new in every morning. Hallelujah. We will go to the uh, third, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean uh, speciality, third quality of an eagle, that is the eagle, yes, uh, I mean, escapes from hundreds. Eagles escapes from hundreds. Okay, you know, there are Many hunters, but at the same time, you know, always this eagle is trying to escape from the hunters. Okay, where they are, the Arana Malin Rodo Pache, the eagle and the you know, 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 you comes to the comes to make it as a, as a prey, it always flies upward and it is escaping from the hands of the hunter. You know, when we think about the eagle, we have to connect that special quality of an eagle with our Christian life. You know, there are most of the time there are many traps and schemes of Satan around us, but we have to overcome that. We have to be away from that, and we should not be afraid in the hands of the Satan at any way. I mean, so here we, you know, you know, in in, in Second Corinthians chapter two verse eleven. So, uh, Apostle John, uh, Apostle Paul is talking about Satan and the, the, the scheme of the Satan. Okay, Second Corinthians chapter two verse eleven. Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Okay, what is that? You know, we are not ignorant about the schemes of Satan. We are not in ignorant about the schemes of Satan. That means, you know, we have to know what is the scheme of the Satan. You know, the scheme of Satan will not be same to every person. It is different. It is different. Always, we have to understand that Satan has a screen, uh, okay, scheme. You know, Satan was approaching Adam and Eve or Eve with a special scheme, right? You know, I mean, uh, Satan was saying, okay, did God told you that you should not eat the fruit of this tree? Then what, uh, what did uh, Eve say? What does the answer? What does the reply? To the serpent. Eve. What did she say? God really said that we should not eat or touch from it. God really said we should not eat, not only eat, but should not touch. That's right. It, at the same time, so the first question that uh, a serpent was asking, that is a different question. Again, you know, after that, again and again, there is a, there is a conversation between Satan and Eve. Okay, after that, Eve decided, okay, so it is good for eating. Okay, it is it is good for seeing, so I can have it. And he, she was just, I mean, I mean, taking the fruit and eating that one, right? Okay, what happens there? You know, Satan is coming and approaching every person in different ways. And Satan is approaching the people in different ways, with different schemes. Okay, here also we understand that you know uh, the, the 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 I mean uh, 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 Satan. You know when we when we study about Satan schemes and all, you know here also we understand that you know the scheme of the Satan. You know the scheme of the Satan, and we have to be away from the schemes of Satan. Hallelujah! And that's what uh, we understand from uh, from uh, the the third point for a third quality of uh, uh, this eagle. And the fourth one is. Eagles fly with eagles only. The fourth one, the fourth point, the fourth quality is eagles always fly with eagles only. 
Okay, you know, uh, we, we know that uh, there are many many birds in the air, and uh, uh, there are sparrows, and uh, there are many ravens, but they don't fly with these birds. The eagles never fly with all these birds. At the same time, they don't live with any chicken or sparrow or anyone. I mean, under this world. Okay, so it says that okay, I am not from this world. I am living above all these things. And I have a vision and I have to fly away from all these people and I'm staying away from all these all these worldly things. You know, for example, you know, one day um, uh, there, there's, there's a story I heard that, you know, one day uh, one person, one man, he was walking through the road and he saw a, 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 a baby an eagle, I mean, uh, at, the, at, the, at the roadside, uh, it, it was wounded. And he said, okay, I can take this uh, uh, eaglet or I can take this baby eagle uh, to my home uh, because uh, I have many chickens in my, in my, in my house. And he took that, I mean, a baby eagle to his home and this uh, uh, baby eagle was uh, living uh, with uh, the chickens. So what happened? One day, um, uh, something different happens. You know, this man was watching this uh, eagle and in the, the eagle is always growing, 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 and uh, I mean, always playing with the chicken, other chickens in the home. So one day, one of his friends came there and he said, you know, do one thing, this is not chicken, this is an eagle. So you have to take this eagle to the top of the mountain. Take this eagle to the top of the mountain. And then after that, I mean, this man was taking this eagle to the top of the mountain and he was saying, okay, I will just leave that eagle there and I'll come back. He just went to the top of the mountain with this eagle and he just placed that, I mean, uh, eagle there. And then he was listening another sound that was the another eagle from above making a special sound. Then this eagle was listening that sound, and he and, and this eagle was say, okay thinking, oh, oh is, is it my mom? Is it my mom? And that mom also was making a, a, a particular noise, and the mom was realizing, oh, this is my daughter, or this is my son. So oh, I have to get that. I mean, my child back. And then after that, you know. He just placed there, and while that the eagle was listening that noise, you know, she was I mean, looking up and she started to try, started to fly, fly upward from that mountain, and it reached to the more. And this man was saying, "Oh, I was growing an eagle with my chickens, but right then came that eagle went with its own mom, its own group." You know, you, you have to understand one thing. You know, we are the people of heaven and we are not the people of this world. We are not the people of this world and we are supposed to fly away from this, I mean, from this place. You know, always the eagles are, I mean, flying with the eagles. Okay, so we have to think about, I mean, the, 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 the uh, I mean, meaning of that story that we have to understand we are not of this world, but we are the the, the people of heaven. We are the people of heaven, and we are one day, I mean, we are trying to fly away from this world to the heaven. Right? Still, so we are living in this world. God has separated every one of us from this world and placed again in this world. And God said, I mean, you have to be fruitful for the name of the Lord in this world. But one day, there is a day, it is coming that you will have to fly away from this world towards heaven. Hallelujah. So this morning, it is our responsibility to strengthen, to renew our spiritual strength. And we have to think about, we have to take a decision. Oh Lord, I need a strength and I need to I mean, renew my strength to fly away from this world towards heaven. Hallelujah. So the second coming of Jesus Christ is at hand and we are going to fly away from this world. So that's what we understand that we need to have the we need to I mean, renew our spiritual strength to fly away from this body precious. I mean, praise God. And again, you know, you can read uh, uh, Second Corinthians chapter six verse forty. Second Corinthians chapter six verse forty. Now he 
Okay, so it says that do not be unlocked, okay, unequally yoked with unbelievers and people leading a sinful life. That means you can mingle with those people, okay. This is this is a, this is a, uh, I'm a talking about the uh, mingling with the other people, mingling with the unbelievers, okay, or uh, yoked with the, the other people. So, you know, don't think that again, okay, I'm saying that again, okay, don't be mingled with the other people, the unbelievers, but the meaning is you know, we can. Mingle with other people. At the same time, it says that never be unequally yoked. Never be unequally yoked. That means, you know, we have to mingle with other people. At the same time, if that person will destroy your spiritual life, then don't go for that. That's the meaning of that. Do not be unequally yoked. Okay. Okay, then if it is not suitable for you, don't go for that. Okay, if you feel that that person will destroy your spiritual strength, then don't go for that. But if you can gain that person, if you can share the word with that person, if you can bring that person also to the strength of the spirituality, then you can go for that. You can go for that. Otherwise, don't be mingled with. The other people, those who can destroy your life. There's a quotation. There's a quotation. It says like this. Amen? Your association determines destiny of your life. Is it? Your association determines destiny of your life. They will either build you up or break you. They will either build you up or break you. They will either take you to your destiny, or it will hinder your way to your destiny. So never associate with people who will drain your energy. There are some people, they can drain your energy. You have an energy. But those people will drain your energy. But when you are getting a company with those people, when you are getting a, I mean, associated with the, those people, I mean, your energy, you are using your energy, the spiritual energy we are talking. Okay, so I mean, uh, no, the worldly things are there, but at the same time, we should not lose our spiritual energy. We should not lose our spiritual strength. I mean, if you are mingling with other people, if you are, I mean, uh, talking with other people, I mean, let them also come to Christ and let them also get the spiritual strength and, and spiritual power through the talk and through your, your association. Otherwise, don't go for that. That's the meaning of that. I mean, again, you know, in the second Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, second Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. If anyone does not obey what we say in this letter, take note of that person and have nothing to do with him that he may be ashamed. Do not regard him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. Can you, can you read that verse in Malala? If somebody's having the do not be accompanied with the people those who are disobeying the word of the apostles. What do you mean by that? They not be associated with those people. Or they not have a company with those people, those who are disobeying the word of God. Which means, which means, you know, it, 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 it cannot say that okay, you don't have a okay, you don't have a relation with those people, but you can talk to those people at the same time. Keep in mind that if they are going away from the word of God, if they are going away from the presence of God, if you can gain that person, go to that person, speak to those people, and bring them back to Christ. Bring them back to the word of God. Even if you can, otherwise, leave them. Otherwise, leave them in the presence of God. God will take care of that person. Amen. So, so, most of the time, what happens? We are going to Talk to those people. We are going to have a have an association or company with those people, but that's part of it. Okay, our energy is lost and our strength is lost, and we are also joining with those people. 
at last. Okay, so this should not happen. And we have to take care of us and we have to have that energy and we have to keep that in our life and we have to go to that person. Otherwise, just ignore those people. Ignore those people because they are going away from the presence of God. If you can gain that person, go to that person and gain that person. At the same time, the fifth, I mean, speciality and the quality of an eagle is eagles have one partner for life. This is eagles have only one partner for life. You know, I'm giving that literal meaning of uh, that point. At the same time, you know, the, the, the spiritual meaning that we take about uh, this point is be devoted to your God who is your eternal life partner. Who is your eternal life partner? Jesus Christ is the eternal life partner of every believer. So we have to be devoted to Jesus Christ. We have a life partner spiritually, that is Jesus Christ. You know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 to 4, Paul says that, I betrothed you to one husband, to Christ as a pure virgin. Okay. That means our engagement is over. When we are engaged and we are the daughter with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Christian church and the Christ. The Christian church and the Christ. Hallelujah. And we have to know that Christ is the bride and we are the bridegroom. Christ is the bride and we are the bridegroom. You know, we have to know that in those, those days when Apostle uh, Paul was writing this letter, the, the believers of the Corinthian church, they were diverting from the presence of God. They were diverting from the word of God and they were I mean, serving many other gods and goddesses. And those people were I mean, doing all kinds of worldly things and they were enjoying in the desires of the world. So that's the reason Apostle Paul says that, okay, you people, you are, you, are, you are saying that you are a believer. At the same time, you are enjoying with all the worldly pressures and you are worshipping the other gods and goddesses. So come back because I already I mean, I mean, made an engagement with Jesus Christ and church. So Paul says that, I mean, I have, I have something in my mind and I think that I can, you are already engaged with the Jesus Christ and you cannot go away from the presence of God. You know, when I'm, I was thinking about this verse and that the eagle, the eagle always has only one life partner. You know, remember, we have a life partner that is Jesus Christ. I mean, that is spiritually, spiritually, when we think about those things, and and we have to understand that we are already engaged with the, the, the Jesus Christ the husband. Okay, so our marriage will happen one day. Amen. When our marriage will happen one day, I mean, I know that I mean, the, the people who are sitting here, you are, I mean, most of them are, are, are married. Okay, at the same time, you have another husband. The church has another bride. Okay, what is that? Okay. It is coming. It is coming. Okay, so that, that the wedding will be happening one day in heaven. So we are waiting for that. Okay. So again, the, the uh, I mean, uh, uh, maybe sixth to point, the sixth one. Eagles enjoy the storm. Eagles enjoy the storm. So when I speak about eagles, always enjoy the storm. Okay. Usually all the birds. All the animals, all the human people, they are afraid of the storm, right? They are afraid of storm. They don't like, you know, whenever the, the, the storm is coming, you know, these people, all the people, especially all the birds are just, I mean, trying to escape from that and they are just, I mean, finding the shelter. Okay? They will go inside the house. Okay? There are there are many storms happened already in the, in the previous days and still, I mean, there are, I mean, it, it is happening in different places. Even in Kerala also. You know, when the storm comes, usually we all try to escape from that and we all try to I mean, get a shelter about it. Okay, but at the same time, eagles, they are looking for a storm. They are looking for a storm. And they say, okay, I mean, when the storm comes, and they are, they are so happy because, you know, what, what they do is they just still, I mean, just, 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 I mean, just, uh, I mean, what is that? Like flying still in the air when the storm comes, and automatically 
that I mean, eagle will go like this. Okay, when the storm comes, then no problem. I mean, it, it, is, it is ready to face the challenge. It is ready to face the storm. Then always the eagle is ready and it is willing. So that it, 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 it don't want to fly it. No, but again, it, can, it can still, I mean, I mean stand like this and uh, I mean, the storm will I mean, take that eagle to its own place. Okay, so this is what we understand from the eagle's life and we have to have that attitude. When the problems are coming, when the challenges are coming, when we are going through the struggles, we have to face that. We have to face that. We have to go through that. I mean, because the struggles and the hardship of a believer will increase that person and the, the, the struggles of the person will strengthen that person to go forward. I personally believe that. Whenever we have the challenges, whenever we have the struggles, whenever we have the hardship in our life, you know, the problems that we have, I mean, we have to face that. I mean, the challenges are frustrating. If you are not ready to I mean, face the challenges, there is no success. There is no success. Hallelujah. That's part that we understand from that portion. That is, uh, I mean, eagles always enjoy the storm. I mean, let us read Colossians chapter 3. Verses 1 to 4. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts and things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you, we, you, then you also will appear with him in glory. Praise God. When we look into Jesus, when we look unto Jesus, then we will be able to fly. And we will be able to face <coughs> the problem. We'll be able to face the challenges in our life. Okay? So that's what uh, we read there. <coughs> we are supposed to look unto the heaven. We are supposed to look unto the heaven and we have Jesus Christ in heaven. And we are looking unto Jesus in heaven. Because Jesus says that, okay, I'm already done. And, and I overcame all the worldly things that I, I'm standing here. I'm sitting in, in, in heaven at the right, right hand of the Father. And Jesus says, you can also overcome. You can also face the troubles. You can also, I mean, face the challenges in your life. Because, I mean, Jesus Christ said, I already overcame all the troubles of this world. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Amen. So that's the reason that we understand that always it says that I mean, we can look unto Jesus. When we look unto heaven, Jesus is sitting there. Jesus says, no problem. You can also I mean, face the challenges. You can also go through the struggles. I mean, I overcame everything and I'm standing at the right hand of God. Amen. So we have the strength that we have to renew the strength. And the, the final point is eagles fly high always. Eagles always flies high. That means it overcomes all kinds of obstacles. And it can fly high above every obstacle. You know, we understand there are waves in the sea. At the same time, when you go down to the bottom of the sea, okay, to the bottom of the sea, you can see, maybe you can, if you're standing on a nearby maybe beach or somewhere, you can see the waves are coming. It is scary. You know, when, when you see the world you know, it comes, you know, you, you're uh, sometimes you're scary and you're afraid of that. At the same time, go to the bottom of the sea. It is very calm. There it is very calm. So find out where you can reach and find out where you will get the rest. Find out the place where you can get the rest. You know, always the people are looking for the problem and always the people are looking on the problems and the challenges, all they are saying, "Oh, that problem is a great problem. This problem is a big problem. I cannot, I cannot face that." But look unto Jesus and go to the resting place, and there is the place that God will give you the rest. Hallelujah! There is a place. I mean, which is you know, you can call it as a, I mean, uh, the point of, uh, I mean, calm. The point of calm. The still. Okay. Other than that, it kept the point. But still, 
again and the medical point when it is still a center point is always still hallelujah okay so there is the place that god is placing you at because when you have that attitude of flying away from this not escaping from this but we are flying upward we are flying upward all the obstacles all the hindrances all the problems will come down when we fly above hallelujah and we fly above just like an eagle hallelujah so this morning let me encourage every one of us that yeah. god has given us the strength and we have to renew the strength we have to renew our spiritual strength and may god bless you all through this course and let us i mean all together i mean close our eyes in the presence of god and let us have that attitude of an eagle yeah. and let us summit ourselves in the mighty hand of this morning praise you lord shall we close our eyes in the presence of god as we were listening the word of god this morning let us also have that spiritual vision in our christian life let us search and find out and eat the food eat the spiritual food let us not be the prey in the hands of a satan most of the time many of the people are just like a prey in the hands of satan but what satan says they are ready to do that but we have to fight against the satanic power we have to fight against the satanic I mean, authority and we have to win and we have to be successful with the hands of god hallelujah let us be associated with the spiritual people let us be associated with them. let us have that company with the spiritual people which will i mean encourage you which will i mean i mean i mean help help you to i mean i mean increase your energy spiritual energy I mean, let us be devoted to Christ, who is the eternal partner, our eternal partner in Jesus Christ. And let us have that association. Let us be devoted to Christ, who is the eternal partner. And let us not run away from the problem, but let us let us I mean, face the challenges in our life. Let us not run away from the problems, but let us I mean, always face the challenges. And also, let us overcome. the obstacles with the energy with the power of god with the presence of god in every moment of our life this morning we are so surrender our life to the presence of god so that god will encourage us and god will strengthen us this morning and god will I mean, always I mean, take care of us and he will renew our power and he will renew our strength hallelujah. and he will, will fly away from this world one day hallelujah that's all i mean surrender our life to the presence of god very much that uh, john and to lead us in prayer